Okay. Do you want to play the only way to stop this outbreak is for you to get shot. Shot with a vaccine, that is. It's Nutty History Vaccinations. Vaccines have become a hot button issue in the last decade or so. And you can take a second to click that hot button to subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell, like this video, and leave a comment. It doesn't matter where you fall on the political spectrum, Wrong. you're probably going to find something to get upset about in this video. Your language is offensive. Vaccines shouldn't be a political issue, but somehow they are. So let's just lay it all out on the table and get it out of the way. Vaccines do not cause autism, period. But yes, vaccines can cause side effects, and sometimes those side effects can be serious. But the diseases the vaccines eradicate are worse than the side effects. We'll show you that, plus how the anti-vaxxer movement has not only politicized vaccinations, but are now attaching themselves to the COVID-19 crisis. Vaccinations save millions of lives by preventing diseases, but an increasing amount of people are refusing to subject themselves and their children to them, claiming they're responsible for numerous side effects. The more people that opt out of vaccinations, the less effective those vaccinations are and our herd immunity becomes. To combat this, school districts and local governments have become instituting mandatory vaccination policies, which has only inflamed the anti-vaxxers' paranoia and spawned a lucrative branch of conspiracy media. Now, with the COVID-19 pandemic shutting the world down, causing massive death and economic destruction, the rush for a vaccine is on, and rumors of making it mandatory are flying. And the fear in some groups with a COVID vaccine is that there may be minimal testing, as scientists are rushing to develop it and push it through due to these unprecedented times. So how do vaccines work exactly? Well, let's take a look at how your body works. And no, we're not about to have the talk. When diseases enter your body, they start to reproduce. Your immune system recognizes the invaders and makes antibodies. These antibodies have a couple of jobs. For their first job, they help destroy those invading germs. They may not act fast enough to prevent you from becoming sick, but they'll work to track down those attacking germs and get you to get well. Just like Osmosis Jones, Ozzy didn't recognize Thrax at first when he snuck in on that hard-boiled egg. But with Drix's help, they work together to overcome Mayor Fleming's incompetence, eliminate Thrax, and save Frank. Y'all have seen Osmosis Jones, right? Great movie. The antibody's second job is to protect you from future infections. They remain in your bloodstream with a memory of their attack plan. Now they remember how to fight these particular germs so they can destroy them before they have a chance to make you sick. This is immunity. Vaccines help you develop immunity without getting sick first. Vaccines are made from the same germs, or parts of them, that cause the disease. But the germs in vaccines are either killed or weakened so they won't make you sick. Your immune system reacts to the vaccine in a similar way that it would if it were being invaded by the disease, by making antibodies. If you're ever exposed to the real disease, the antibodies are there to protect you. Some diseases you can get one vaccine and be good the rest of your life. Other diseases like the flu mutate so often that we need a new vaccine every year. So, okay, if vaccines save so many lives, why are there people that are so demonstrably against them? Much of it comes down to concerned parents searching for answers on what's best for their kids. In public opinion polls conducted in the US, when people were asked if parents should decide whether or not to have their children vaccinated, only 28% said yes in 2008. It was 46% in 2018. The reason people usually give for being against vaccines is their side effects. Vaccines are potential side effects being weighed against potentially saving generations of lives. The anti-vaxxer movement as we know it today started with a discredited source that linked childhood vaccinations to autism. It was later retracted and disproven time and time again. That's not to say a vaccine side effect can't be scary. To a new parent getting their baby vaccinated, a fever, a rash, 
possibly a seizure, any rare or even more common side effect is frightening and can seem cruel and unnecessary. After all, this baby was fine before it got this injection. Now it's had this shot and is reacting this way. Well, first of all, not all cases are reactions to the vaccine. Remember, correlation does not equal causation. Just because something happened around the same time as something else doesn't mean one thing caused the other. Also remember, we do not have a clear picture of how awful these diseases are. Vaccines have all but eradicated some of the worst diseases in the history of mankind. Without a vaccine, they come back. It sucks that you may have a rash, but death on a massive scale is worse. From 1880 to 1980, half a billion people died from smallpox. During World War I, about 80% of the US military deaths were from Spanish flu. These are the death tolls that the human race experiences due to disease when left unchecked. In 1980, 4 million people died from measles. In 2018, that number is 140,000 thanks to the vaccine. Some people are allergic to vaccines. They can't get them. They are able to opt out of mandatory vaccination programs in school districts and communities. It's even more important for them that everyone else gets them. Not everyone that gets vaccinated responds. So if there are a bunch of unvaccinated kids spreading a disease around, vaccinated kids will get it too. To accomplish herd immunity for measles, 95% of the people around you need to be vaccinated. But hey, the anti-vax movement sure is catchy. And that goes a long way in this day and age. Studies and statistics can only get so far and aren't as sensational as anecdotes, gut feelings, and misinformation spread by hurt and grieving parents that may be immune to facts. And the anti-vax groups are organized, strategic, savvy media manipulators. A study by researchers at George Washington University tracked vaccine conversations on Facebook during the 2019 measles outbreak. There were three times as many active anti-vaccination communities as pro-vaccination communities. The researchers found that Facebook pages pushing accurate pro-vaccine information were mostly clustered in an insular group, while the anti-vaccine pages treated vaccine resistance as a kind of political campaign and used different messages to reach different types of undecided voters. As the COVID death count rises, it appears a showdown is on the horizon. The virus has disrupted lives all over the world. And as countries ease restriction and more death follows, the conclusion being reached by world leaders is a return to normalcy will not happen until a vaccine is created. Now, social media is already filling up with misinformation about a COVID-19 vaccine months or years before one even exists. As I've said, medicine has side effects. And because the pandemic's crazy urgency, any COVID-19 vaccine is gonna be fast-tracked through the testing process. The anti-vaccine activists will be sure to pounce on that to claim that it is untested and dangerous, spinning reasonable concerns about the vaccine into unfounded fears about its safety. There's already conspiracy theories claiming Bill Gates created the virus and is trying to profit from it. These theories will be amplified, and the attempts to discredit leading virus research efforts will intensify as the vaccine nears. When a COVID-19 vaccine is approved, people may be required to take it to go certain places. It's not like the government would come and force everyone to take it. So don't listen to your uncle that always wears camouflage, lives in a tent, and smells like Miller Lite and beef jerky. The US government is not going to round everyone up and force them to get a vaccine. But stadiums, airlines, even grocery stores and other privately owned businesses could conceivably ask you to show proof that you were vaccinated before being allowed on that property. You've seen the public hissy fits people have thrown after they've just been asked to wear a mask. And I'm not doing it because I woke up in a free country. Can you imagine the meltdown someone may have the second they're not allowed into Disneyland without proof of vaccination? If the pandemic went uncontrolled in the United States, it could continue for months after herd immunity was reached, infecting many more millions in the process. People have actually advocated for this, saying to just rip off the Band-Aid. The Band-Aid is millions of lives, and those deaths are entirely preventable. 
In the United States, from mid-March to mid-May, almost 100,000 people have died because of this disease. And that is with extreme social distancing in place. Imagine the death toll without it. So, as frustrating as it is, as of right now in the COVID-19 crisis, the best course of action seems to be to practice social distancing, wear a mask and wash your hands, and wait for a vaccine. When a COVID-19 vaccine does become available, there's sure to be some controversy. Vaccines do have side effects, sometimes serious. But please remember, the disease is always worse. One thing that'll make everyone feel better is if you'll leave us a comment, tell us what you think, click subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all things Nutty History. Thanks for watching Nutty History.